Let's let's stand up. My name is Bill. Blow trumpets. Trumpets down. Holy Father, we come before thee, Lord, in your holy Sabbath. You say it's between us and thee. You will be the one to send the fire the nation of Israel. Cleanse us, Lord, from all our thoughts. Cleanse us, Lord, from all our ways. Cleanse us, Lord. Refresh us. Make us new again. In the name of your son, Jesus the Christ, we also pray for our leadership. We pray for our brothers and sisters that's weak in faith. Strengthen their faith. We also pray for those that are sick. Heal them quickly and speedily. We also thank you for our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. Our Father, which is in heaven, honor be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done as it is in heaven, let it be on earth. Give us his day of daily bread and forgive us for our sin. Forgive other sins against us, lead us not into temptation, deliver us from all evil. Father, we continue, pray you, Lord, you send your angels to walk among us. Guide us and protect us. Same thing you tell Joshua, meditate on it days and night. That's where prosperity, that's where your help come from, is through your laws, statutes, and commandments. You will intervene. These, these people who are trying to destroy us, you will intervene, Lord, and fight our battles. In the name of your son, Jesus the Christ, let the whole congregation say hallelujah. 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 And Christ, we thank you for the drink, also for the food, Lord. And continue, bless our UIC, continue, call your people in. They may repent and acknowledge you are the true God. There is no God but thee. In the name of your son, Jesus the Christ, we pray, we ask, amen. Let's begin, family. Let's begin. I heard the title of the class. Christianity is a demon. You know why Christianity is a demon? A lot of times people don't realize. Yeah, you know, like I don't even have that in my note. Give me Matthew one. Matthew one. Okay. Yeah, yeah, you know this Matthew one, right? Now let's let's go to the new uh, to the Old Testament. What, what is what is the last book before you catch Matthew one? Malachi. Mm -hmm. So what happened? What happened to the Greek captivity, your Christians? Uh, let's go to Daniel. Let's prove that, that the, 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 the third empire. What was it? You all read the Bible with no understanding. That's why you all worship the white man all your life. You are taking your worship the Lord. You are not worship the Lord. Now, if you worship something, you, know, you follow what this thing said to follow. God say, honor the Sabbath, keep it holy. That's when you worship him. Not honor Sunday, keep it holy. Honor the Sabbath, keep it holy. Go ahead. Daniel chapter 7, verse 6. Mm -hmm. After this, I beheld, and lo, another, like a leopard, which had upon the back of it four mm -hmm. wings of a fowl. Mm -hmm. The beast had also four heads, and dominion was given to it. Mm -hmm. After this, I saw in the night visions. And behold, a fourth beast, dreadful and terrible. Because, and because now let's go to the first. Let's, let's, let's go to the first empire. What was the first empire? Yes, let's begin in the first. Verse 4. The first was like a lion and had eagle's wings. I beheld till the wings thereof were plucked, and it was lifted up from the earth mm -hmm. and made stand upon the feet as a man, mm -hmm. and as a man's heart was given to it. Mm -hmm. And There's behold. Babylon. There's Babylon. Go ahead. And behold, another beast, a second, like to a bear. Mm -hmm. And it was raised up its side on one side. That's the meat in the Persian. And it yeah. had three ribs in the mouth of it, between the teeth of it. And they said thus unto it, Arise, devour much flesh. After this I beheld, and lo, another, like a leopard, which had upon the back of it four wings of a fowl. This is the Greek. So, okay, so now when you go... To the, to the Bible, why is Malachi? So what happened in the Greek captivity to the children of Israel? So why the book who's supposed to be there is not there? Because your Christian ain't trying to find out nothing. You're, you're, more, you're more focused on eat chickens and, and whatever pork, whatever pork, your pork chops you're in. That's why when you see the Israelite teach the Bible, just sss, sss, sss. Just be quiet, sss. We're not going to entertain your foolishness because you don't know nothing about the Bible. Let's go to Matthew 1. Matthew 1. Mm -hmm. First verse. Matthew chapter 1, verse 1. The book of the generation of Jesus Christ. This is the book 
of the generation of Jesus Christ. Who was Jesus Christ? An Israelite. An Israelite. You think your common sense will tell you that? No. Because you have followed the white man with his doctrine philosophy, Christianity. That's why he's a demon. Christianity is a demon that dwell within white folks. You understand? And but guess what? Today is your wake up call. Either you're gonna obey what God said, or you're gonna obey what Christianity been prep, been teach, and just dead. Die. Go ahead. The book of the generation of Jesus Christ, the son of David, the son of Abraham. Abraham begat Isaac, and Isaac begat Jacob. And you know, Jacob with, you know with, with, with common sense, right? Let's read it slow. Let's read it slow. Matthew chapter 1, verse 1. The book of the generation of Jesus Christ. The generation of Jesus Christ. Go ahead. The son of David. Jesus Christ was the son of David. The only way Jesus Christ can be the son of David, he got to born by a man. That's what common sense will tell you that. You understand? Man? But guess what? Your knowledge is not up there. Your understanding is short. So that's why you need to be quiet and sit down. Let will prophet break the Bible down to you. As plenty as it come. Go ahead. The son of Abraham. The son of Abraham. Who was Abraham? A man. Abraham was a man. Go ahead. Abraham begat Isaac. Abraham begat Isaac. I did Abraham begat Isaac. By sperm. By sperm. Go ahead. And Isaac begat Jacob. How did Isaac get Jacob? By sperm. Go ahead. And Jacob begat Judas and his okay. brethren. Yeah. How did Jacob get Judah? By sperm. Right? So, so now you know all these things. So what made Christ didn't have a father? But he was a man. You see? That's why we have to pay attention. In, what is that? Uh, Nehemiah 8 and 8. Let me get that. You see? That's why Deuteronomy 28. It's just like we will destroy as a people. Then we lost our common sense, our culture, everything. Go ahead. Nehemiah chapter 8, verse 8. So they read in the book of the, in the law of God distinctly. And do what? And gave the sense. See, our job is to give the senses. Because you don't have no common sense when you read the Bible. This is all about the white man common sense. That's all you got. But the will prophet that opened this Bible, who got the key to this Bible, is going to break it down as it is written. Yeah, there is no gain sin. Straight up. Go ahead. So they read in the book in the law of God distinctly and gave the sense. Because our people don't have no common sense. There you go. They say Jesus Christ, the son of David, right? Mm -hmm. Who was David? David was an Israelite. David coming from the tribe of Judah. Then he go to now, hold on to that, go to uh, uh, Hebrews 7 and 14. Then you would have think that thing is clear. But to the righteous, it's clear. But to the sinner, it's like a smoke. I could not see it. Just stop sinning, then you will see it clear. <laughs> Go ahead. Hebrews 7, 14. For it is evident that our Lord sprang out of Judah. Okay. He coming out of the tribe of Judah. What makes a Judah tribe? A man. It's not a woman. Those are common sense. Common sense. You think your guys got common sense? Oh, no. Jesus Christ was special. He coming from he didn't have a father. He, he was so special. But how could he judge you? Then you have a father. He didn't have a father. How would he qualify? <laughs> you understand? That's common sense again. <laughs> because when he come, he judged, say, Lord, you didn't come as we are. You understand? But the Bible says he was tempted like we can tempt it. Because he was a man <laughs> born by another man. But you think you have common sense. You don't have common sense to understand that. It's, it's hard for you to understand it. You know why? Because you have to stop sinning. Then you can see clearly. You understand? Yeah, but you're, you're on a continue in your lifestyle. But you want the Lord to show you that he's marvelous. The mystery of the Bible. You crazy. Go ahead. For it is evident that our Lord sprang out of Judah. Mm -hmm. This is evidence. Jesus Christ coming out of the tribe of Judah. What made the tribe of Judah? A man, a man, a man, a man. All right, let's go back to Matthew. The 
The book of Matthew, chapter 1, verse 1. The book of the generation of Jesus Christ, mm -hmm. the son of David, mm -hmm. the son of Abraham. Mm -hmm. Abraham begat Isaac, and Isaac begat Jacob, mm -hmm. and Jacob begat Judas and his brethren. Mm -hmm. Now jump to verse 21. 21. And she shall bring forth a son. See this way. Oh, I'm confused. She gonna bring forth a son. Go ahead. And thou shalt call his name Jesus. Where the prophecy of that? Is uh, is in uh, Daniel? Oh, is it Daniel nine? To uh, a son was given. He, I mean, a governor. He, I mean, title. His title was the governor, the mighty God. Isaiah, yeah, Isaiah nine, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, but people don't understand that. You thinking that the New Testament. The New Testament coming from the Old Testament. Without the Old Testament, there will never be a New Testament. That's how confused you are. You're thinking just, just open the Bible in Matthew. Oh, I have full understanding. No, 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 no. You're just stupid and dumb. Go ahead. And she shall bring forth a son, and thou shalt call his name Jesus. Mm -hmm. For he shall save his people from their sins. Because if he's going to save his people from their sins, Think about it. Why he didn't say all people there? Because he didn't come for all people. He came for his people. Again, common sense. Christianity is a damn demon. <laughs> That's common sense. He came for his people. He came for his people. That's common sense. Christianity is a demon. Now let's go to uh, 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 2 and 6. Matthew 2 and 6. Matthew chapter 2 verse 6. And thou Bethlehem, in the land of Judah. See, in the land of Judah. Go ahead. Are not the least among the princes of Judah. Go ahead. For out of thee. So out of what? Out of thee. No, I, you mean, you mean out of the Holy Spirit. Out of thee. Out of the Holy Spirit. Out of thee. No, out of the Holy Spirit. Out of thee. Out of the Holy Spirit. Out of thee. Out of the thee, which is the tribe of Judah. Go ahead. Shall come. A Shall governor. come. What? A governor. A governor. You see how simple, you see, see how easy that thing is? <laughs> not out of the Holy Spirit, but not out of the tribe of Judah, there's going to come a governor. A governor. A governor. Christianity is a demon. <laughs> Straight up. Go ahead. That's out so of thee, out of the tribe of Judah, there shall come a governor. Out of thee. The Bible is a plain book. Out of thee. Go ahead. For out of thee. Shall come a governor that shall rule my people Israel. You see that? Out of the tribe of Judah, there's going to come a governor. Oh, no, no. They say out of the Holy Spirit, bro. For out of thee. <laughs> out of the tribe of Judah is going to come a governor. Then a lot of your Israelite, you don't get it. Then, then you're used to get it. You don't get it. You know why you don't get it? Because your sin is blinding your eyes. You cannot see it now. The Lord removed that spirit from you. You understand? That's why you preach the way you preach. Then a lot of you are, you're preaching for the, uh, you're preaching to, to uh, you're preaching the word that's going to bring you all to death. <laughs> you understand? You just, you know what I mean? You just gradually, you know what I mean? Speak heresy and it's going to put you to death. Go ahead. And, and thou Bethlehem in the land of Judah. Are not the least among the princes of Judah. Uh -huh. For out of thee shall come a governor. Out of, out of Judah is going to come a governor. Let's read that in, a, in Isaiah uh, 9. Bro. Out of Judah is going to come a governor. Let's see if the prophecy say, say the title. The book of Isaiah chapter 9 verse 6. For unto us a child is born. Uh -huh. Unto us a son is given. Unto us a son is given. Jesus Christ is given. To us, the Israelite, not to always the people. That's what the prophecy said. Go ahead. And the government shall be upon his shoulder. You see that? The government shall be what? Upon his shoulder. See, he's the man who's going to hold the government of the nation of Israel and his shoulder. So now you understand when it's talking about what we just read. Go ahead. And his name shall be called Wonderful, mm -hmm. Counselor, the Mighty God, mm -hmm. the Everlasting Father. You see that? He hold a lot of title. That spirit right here hold a lot of title. The mighty God. You understand? The prince of peace. He hold a lot of title. Why he hold his title? Because he was in the beginning. He was in the beginning. Go ahead. The mighty God. The everlasting father. 
the Prince of Peace. The Prince of Peace. Jesus Christ bring peace between us and the Father. Let's go back. Matthew 2 and 6. And thou Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are not the least among the princes of Judah. Mm -hmm. For out of thee shall come a governor that shall rule my people, Israel. See, out of the tribe of Judah, there's going to come a governor. There's going to govern the nation of Israel. His name is Jesus the Christ. It's plain and simple. But why is it not plain to you? Why, why it become a smoke to you? Or why it become confused to you? It's because you refuse to keep any commandments. And you think and just praise. I mean, anybody can praise. But when you worship, it's totally different. You understand? You can praise somebody. I can praise you. But when you get to worship, now you understand? It's another number. Like you just, it's another thing. You understand? That's why people don't understand. They're talking about, I, I worship you. You don't worship God. Because if you worship God, you would have done the things God said to do. God said, honor your Sabbath. Keep it holy. That's what God said. God gives a Sabbath day. The white man give a Sunday. You know, you, you know man, how I know your guys confused? Give me that, that, the, the Matthew. Is that Matthew 28? Let me see. A long time I pulled that. Let me get Matthew 28. Let me go right back. That's how I know your mind is like, whoa. Blind. Spirit is blind. Go ahead. Yeah, Matthew 28, verse 1. Matthew chapter 28, verse 1. In the end of the Sabbath. <laughs> okay, hey, listen to what he said. What he said? In the end of the Sabbath. Of the end of what? Of the Sabbath. Uh huh, what just happened? As it began to dawn uh -huh. for, toward the first day of the week. You see how simple the Bible is? <laughs> you see, why you worship Sunday? It say at the end of the Sabbath. That means the Sabbath about to end. Then the first day of the week, you're dumb Christian. You're demonic Christians. Dumb and idiot. You understand? That's why Christianity is a demon. You understand? You under a spell of Christianity. The demon, you got to shake it off, sister. Brother, you got to shake it off. The Bible is plain. To the elect, it's plain. To the prophet that's going to come, it's plain. Let's read it again slow. Slow. Because our people is slow. Slow. Matthew 28, verse 1. In the end of the Sabbath. So we're dealing in the end of the Sabbath. Mm -hmm. What happened in the end of the Sabbath? What just came in? As it began to dawn toward the first day of the week. I thought they said the Sabbath was supposed to be light, light to light. <laughs> yeah. As it beginning to be done, go ahead. As it began to dawn toward the first day of the week. Began to be done, it can be light. Because people said they're done, there is light coming to light. You're, you're just, I'm telling you, our oh, people, let's read it slow now. In, in, the, in the end of the Sabbath. The key point we want to focus on is the end of the Sabbath. At the end of the Sabbath. That's where our focus is going to be. Leonard, go ahead. As it began to dawn toward the first day of the week. See, as it began to dawn to be the first day of the week. You understand? To be the first day of the week. The first day of the week is Sunday. So God give us a Sabbath. Friday sundown to Saturday sundown. But y'all refuse to do that. Your Christians refuse to do that. You know why? You know why you refuse to do that? Give me that in Isaiah, the Isaiah 30 and 1. I'm going to show you why you refuse to do it. Isaiah 30 verse 1. Woe to the rebellious children. God Say, called you a rebellion children. Go ahead. Woe to the rebellious children. Save the Lord. That take counsel, but not of me. Because the counsel of God is plenty said uh, is at the end of the Sabbath. The beginning of the first day of the week. That's what God said. What makes you rebellion is you refuse to do it. Go ahead. And that cover with a covering, but not of my spirit. You see that covering you covering with? You cover with the spirit of the wife, white folks. Who tell you Sunday was the right, what, the right day to worship the Lord. No, the Lord did not give you Sunday, you dumb Christians. 
No. The Lord give you a Sabbath. You've been worshiped the white man all these times. Wow. Interesting. You wonder why you went to vote. In the, you wonder why you go, I want to change things. You're dumb Christians. That's why you're into politics. You're into, you're into every folly of the white man being on earth. You're into stuff like that. Not us. Because we understand there is a true God. The God that give us the Sabbath to keep it holy, that's the God we're going we're gonna to worship. The white man said, you know what? I'm going to give you that Sunday off. You worship the Lord the way I want you to worship the Lord. Mm -hmm. No. The white man going to tell us how to worship the Lord. Because guess what? You know why we're not going to obey by that? Because that's not what the Lord said. The Lord said a Sabbath. A Sabbath. Go ahead. That they may add sin to sin. You see me why you refuse to keep the Sabbath? The Lord said... Be, uh, the reason you refuse you rebellions trying to refuse to keep God's Sabbath is because you want to add up sin upon sin. Meaning that, you know what is the sin upon sin? God said, God said, hey, listen. God said, children of Israel, and I give you this Sabbath to honor me by. The white man said, no, you don't have to do that. You don't have to do that. It's the same dumb spirit that was in the garden. The same dumb spirit that seduced Eve is the same spirit we fight today, which is the spirit of white folks. There was the same spirit that was in the serpent, the same spirit that was in Cain, the same spirit that was in uh, uh, Edom. You understand? Same spirit. You understand? Esau. It's the same spirit. It doesn't change. It's the same spirit today we under who telling us that you don't have to keep the Sabbath. Just keep the Sunday. Then everything going to be good with God. It's the same dumb spirit. God said keep a Sabbath. The white man said no, I'll give you Sunday. Then we dumb enough to follow them. Then you claim, yeah, you worship the Lord. No, you not worship the Lord. If you worship the Lord, you would obey by what God said. Go ahead. Verse 2. That walk to go down into Egypt and have not asked at my mouth. See, you'll love that. You'll love that American dream. You understand? Now I bet you'll sit in front of, a, in front of the TV. When, oh, who's going to be the next president? Mm -hmm. But whoever the next president is, they didn't set for you. <laughs> you understand? They did not set for you. The blacks, they have not set for you. You understand? That's why you guys don't understand. You think for a minute, you can break every laws that is exist in the Bible. Then prosperity will come, bless will come. You know, you know who think like that? A idiot. <laughs> That's who's thinking like that. That's a person that just an idiot. You can break every laws, bless gonna come. Wow. That's interesting. Go ahead. Now let's jump there. Let's go back where we was at. Matthew. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Let's read Matthew again. Matthew chapter 2, verse 6. And thou, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, mm -hmm. are not the least among the princes of Judah. For out of thee shall come a governor. See that, it say out of thee, out of the least of the prince, of the prince of Judah, out of thee. So what was Joseph? Joseph was coming from a line of a prince. <laughs> you understand? Remember, you don't know better. You understand? You're being, you're being wrapped on the Christianity all your life. You understand? For the Catholic Church to bring out the demonic spirit, Christ did not have a father. But if Christ did not have a father, then why did God said Christ, Christ was to save his people? If God, Christ don't have a father, that means Christ come to save all people. We see the demonic spirit behind it, Satan. We see the demonic spirit behind it. Is that means he come for all people. But that's not what the Bible say, though. It says Christ is going to save his people. Then in Matthew 2 and 6, let's read it one more time. And thou, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are not the least among the princes of Judah. For out of thee shall come a governor that shall rule my people Israel. You see that? Now I give you Matthew 5. Let's, let's read the 17 verse. Matthew 5 verse 17. That's how you know Christianity is a demonic spirit. Go ahead. Think not that I come to destroy the law. You see what Christ said. 
What Christ say? Do not think I come to destroy the Lord. That's what he said. Whatever thought pop up in your mind, get rid of that dumb thought. That's really what he's saying to you. Whatever thought that pop up in your mind, get rid of the dumb thoughts, Christianity. He said, what? Think not that I come to destroy the law. Think not that I come to destroy the law. Think not what the dumb Christian said. You see, Christ come to fulfill the whole law. Those are dumb spirit men. Go ahead. All the prophets. You see, all the prophets, because the prophets set laws as well. Go ahead. I am not come to destroy, but to fulfill. You know why Christ make this statement? Give me that in, uh, uh, what is that? Uh, is that Isaiah 8 and 20? That's what I wanted, right? Yes. That's why he make this statement. But a lot of you don't read. You're just sticking to the New Testament. So you will never, you, you, you don't have a clue what the hell going on. Go ahead. Isaiah 8 verse 20. To the law and to the testimony. Uh -huh. If they speak not according to this word, it is because there is no light in them. You see that? If you don't you speak according to the testimony of the nation of Israel, because there's no light in you. So Christ understood that. He'll make you know from the gango. He did not come to destroy the law, which is the foundation of the nation of Israel. It's the laws. We inherit laws, statutes, and commitment how to live on earth. The law is the blueprint how to live. On earth, that's what the law is. Like, for example, like, uh, for example, when you buy a TV in Walmart, they come with a blueprint. How to open it, how to sequence it, how to do a lot of things with it. So the human race, which is the, the nation of Israel, the sons of God, we come with our own blueprint. How to live on earth by laws. That's how we're going to guide the earth. That's how we're going to lead the earth by God's laws. I mean, we're going to give people instructions by God's laws. This is our menu. That's why when God look at you, God look at you and say, look at these people. Only if they know that they have my menu inside them. I mean, I give them the blueprint to the earth. I give them the bless of the earth. By, by God give you laws, statutes and commandments, he give you the bless of the earth. Everything of the earth. Let's prove that. Let's go to, uh, give me Joshua 1 and 8. Let's prove that. Book of Joshua, chapter 1, verse 8. This book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth. That's what God said to Joshua. These, that book of the law shall not depart out of your mouth. Because the day that they parted out of your mouth, you're going to think Christ don't have a father. You're going to think John 3, 16, he for always a people. You're going to think that, you understand that uh, uh, the book of Galatians, you know I mean, that's all people can come in because you lost your character. You understand? You lost your laws. You lost order. You lost instructions. Your heritage, you lost it all. So now you come with a dumb philosophy. God, Christ did not have a father. That's, that's the most dumb thing I ever heard. Go ahead. This book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth, mm -hmm. but thou shalt meditate therein day and night. Go ahead. That thou mayest observe to do according to all that is written therein. Mm -hmm. the, the, the reason we're going to meditate on it days and night, so we may do the things that is written within these laws. Listen. Go ahead. For then. He said, then for then. That's why Christ said, seek ye first the kingdom of God. Then. Everything shall add up into thee. It's the same thing he's saying right here. And then in what? Thou shalt make thy way prosperous. You see the blessing? It's after you keep that commandment, you're going to be blessed. You're going to be blessed, Joshua. You're going to have everything. Because the people don't realize the earth rule by laws. You understand? Everything rule by laws. You understand? Go ahead. And then thou shalt have good success. He said, then... You're going to have a good success. If God said you're going to have a good success, who you think going to stop your success? <laughs> Nobody can stop your success, man. <laughs> you understand? Say, then you're going to have a good success. Who say it? God said you're going to have a good success. Show me a man that can stop your success. Unless you're in a mix of your sin, brother. 
if God say you're going to be successful, there's nobody can stop that thing. You understand? Every spirit, every, everything the, the earth met with submit unto you. You understand? Look at Christ. Perfect is simple. You, know I mean? you understand? All you have, yo, Peter, go, go in the sea. You're going to catch your fish and get the money paid taxes. You understand? You don't need that. But there you go. He was a carpenter. He see the power he had. You understand? He see the power he had. Then Christ had the power where to say, you know what? You sick? You heal. That's it. The word came out. Then the spirit obey, heal, heal the wound. That's it. That's the power of the laws of God. The blueprint you come with is the power in it, family. You know, yeah, you know, man, how you limit yourself because you're in the flesh. You start thinking that you just like them. No, you're not like them. You're not like them. Not at all. You understand? Go ahead. This book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth, mm -hmm. but thou shalt meditate therein day and night, that thou mayest observe to do according to all that is written therein. For mm -hmm. then thou shalt make thy way prosperous. Yeah, yeah, get me the scripture. I think I, I forgot. We should bring it out. That thing. That when he said that in this world and the world to come, you're going you're gonna to have wealth, but to persecution. Is it Matthew? Is it? Uh, what is it? Matthew 20? I forgot that. Yes. Yes. Go ahead. Just, just type of uh, uh, the world to come. This gonna, book? Uh, oh, oh, put persecution. He's going to take you to the verse. I think he's in Matthew. Go ahead. This book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth. Why the book of these laws shall not depart out of our mouth? Because the book of these laws, this is, this is our life. This is our weapons. You see it? Yes. Let's read that. For, for some of you who don't understand the power of laws. This is what Christ said. Go ahead. Matthew 12, verse 32. And whosoever speaketh a word against the Son of Man, it shall be forgiven him. Mm -hmm. But whosoever speaketh against the Holy Ghost, it shall not be forgiven mm -hmm. him. Yeah, yeah, I think it's 10.30. Let me see. I think it's 10. Yeah, 10.30. Let me see. Because we have to understand something in this truth. There's a lot of us, we suffer. You know what we suffer? Because we start to believe that we ain't, no, we ain't nobody. No, we are somebody. Trust me. Go ahead. Mark chapter 10, verse 30. For he shall receive an hundredfold now in this time. Houses and brethren and sisters and mothers. See, for some of you who just, the Lord said, you're going to receive mothers, sister. That means spiritual sister, spiritual mother. Because you're so focused and you're kind of mothers. You understand? The Lord said, don't worry, he's going to give you a new life. Mm. You understand? When you repent, you're going to have a new life, a new beginning, a new everything. But what you do? Nah, I'm good. I'm good. Go ahead. But he shall receive an hundredfold now in this time. Now in this time. Go ahead. Houses. Houses you're going to have in this time. And brethren. Brethren you're going to have in this time. And sisters. Sisters you're going to have in this time. And mothers. Mothers you're going to have in this time. And children. Children you're going to have in this time. And lands. Land you're going to have in this time. With persecution. But you're going to have these things with persecution. You see, you, see, you, see, you see how the Lord grow? He said, don't worry about it. You know, to some people who thought Jesus Christ was a homeless. No, 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 no. No, it's all in your thoughts. <laughs> yeah, it's all in your thoughts. Go ahead. And in the world to come, eternal life. Then he said, don't stop here. In the world to come, everything else. Without persecution in this time. In the world to come, there ain't going to be no persecution. But in this world, we're going to suffer persecution. For the, uh, for the law's sake, I mean, for the truth's sake, we're going to suffer persecution. Which of our forefathers that did not suffer persecution? Look at the Maccabees when they show up in the scene. They suffer persecution. You understand? But they stand stiffly 
for the word of God. A lot of y'all, if, if, problem, uh, if problem arise, a lot of you are going to bend out of shape. You understand me? But guess what? These truth come with persecution. So when they do come, brother, when persecution do come, stand strong. Do not run. Stay strong. Do not run like these brothers in 2018. You understand? Do not run. Stay still and repent and keep God's commandments. A lot of you all run. Go ahead. Let's go back where we were. That's how you know Christianity is a demon. Go ahead. Joshua 1 and 8. This book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth, mm -hmm. but thou shalt meditate therein day and night. Because the book of God's laws is your wealth. God's laws is your wealth. <laughs> you understand? Go ahead. That thou mayest observe to do according to all that is written therein. Mm -hmm. But then thou shalt make thy way prosper. You see that? Then you're going to make your way prosper. Give me that in Deuteronomy 28. And I think 46. Start at 46. Then thou shalt make your way prosper. But if you don't keep the law, you see yourself prospering. That means what the Lord is telling you. Satan is giving you all that. That's what the Lord is trying to tell you. If you're not keeping no commandments of God, you find yourself rich. That means, believe me, your mind, some of your mind ain't right. You understand? Go ahead. Deuteronomy 28 verse 46. And they shall be upon thee for a sign and for a wonder. Mm -hmm. And upon thy seed forever. Because thou servest not the Lord thy God with joyfulness. You see, man, why we was put into captivity? Because we didn't want to keep the law. He has, we didn't want to serve him. How do you serve him? By doing, keeping his laws. That's how you serve the Lord. By keeping his laws. Because we didn't want to keep the law, he put us into captivity. You understand? That's what he does. But a lot of y'all Christians, you know why you hate the laws? Because you know that you have to change. They're no longer being the clubbing, jumping. They're no longer being a, a jump in the pole no more. No, matter, no, no longer being a stripper club. Yeah, no, no longer uh, uh, entertain politics. You understand? No longer think about things that is unvalued. <laughs> you understand? Which is this society. There's nothing in it is value. But the word of God. Go ahead. Because thou servest not the Lord thy God with joyfulness mm -hmm. and with gladness of heart mm -hmm. for the abundance of all things. You see that? When we keep the law, we were supposed to have all things. But when we don't keep the law, guess what? God set enemies over us. That's what he's telling it. You don't want to keep the law? I'm going to set enemies over you. You're going to keep my laws? I'm, I'm going to promise you prosperity. Then there's nobody going to stop that. That's not what he said. Let's read verse. Let's start at verse 1. Deuteronomy 28 verse 1. Let's see what he said. 28 verse 1. And it shall come to pass. Mm -hmm. If thou shalt hearken diligently unto the voice of the Lord thy God. It's going to come to pass. If you obey the laws of God. This is what he said. To observe and to do all his commandments. Which not, I com not some. To observe to do all his commandments. Go ahead. Which I command thee this day, uh -huh. that the Lord thy God will set thee on high. What, what, what he said? When we keep the law, what, the, what God going to do? Will set thee on high. You tell me that God said when we keep the law, he's going to set us on high. So these dumb Christians say don't keep the law. So that's why we're in the bottom then. Mm -hmm. Wow. Christianity is a demon. <laughs> Go ahead. The Lord thy God will set thee on high above all nations of the earth. Oh, that's why they're thinking they're equal to nation. Because they're not keeping the commandments. But when you keep commandments, you're dumb Christians. God promised you're going to be above everybody that's on the face of this earth. Everybody that's on this earth, you're going to be above them. The children of Israel are going to be above them. That's why you have the low self-esteem. When you read in our sign, you say, where's the Chinese man? Where's the Arab man? Where's the white man? Where's the East Indian man? Because you have, you, you, it's time to shake the low self esteem, sis. Brother. Because you want to be joined with them. No, God said, when you keep his commandment, he's going to set you above high. You're going to be above them high. Not equal to them, high. Meaning that they have to look up to look at you. They have to look up. <laughs> right now what they're doing, they ain't looking up to look at you. 
Look at your black community like that no chump said. What you got to lose? Nothing. I mean, you've been, you been in a low condition all your life. But you don't have nothing to lose. That's why that, that you feel like, you understand, you feel like now to go in a poll and, and talk about, I'm going to vote for another white man. You don't have nothing to lose. you just like a chicken that cut their head off. <laughs> you, just, you just talk about how the evil, evil, he, he, this place is evil. You know, you know what America really showing us? It's really showing us America is racist. It's not Daniel Trump. America is racist. If that can, you see me how Daniel Trump is like, you know I mean, balanced with that dude. You know, that, what they tell you about America? America is racist. It's a racist place. But they're trying to put their, they're trying to put the burden in the Daniel Trump joint. Yeah, I man, like something new. The whole foundation of America is on racism. You understand? Out of hatred, murder, blood. Come on, man. You crazy. Go ahead. And all these blessings shall come on thee. You see that? God said, if you obey to do all my commandment, all these blessings are going to come over you. Go ahead. And overtake thee. You see that? It's going to be overtaking you. If God said he's going to bless you, he said the blessing going to be overtaking you. Meaning that other people going to see the bless of God on you. You understand? Then they're going to see you keep the Sabbath day. Keep it holy. Feast of poem. Not Christians. You Not, not follow Christianity. Then you're talking about I'm blessed. No, 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 no. you blessed because the devil is blessing you. You don't keep no laws. Where do you think all this money come from? The devil, your soul worth more than the money who don't worth nothing. <laughs> you understand? You might get up one morning that the, the white man said, the dollar don't worth nothing. Then what? <laughs> the Oprah back back to the project. Bill cut back to the project. All these black uh, celebrity back, back, yeah, back to the project. You understand? But they thought that was in high. But God said, I'm going to bring you low. But God said, when you keep his commandment, he's going to set you on high. Then he's going he's gonna to make sure you bless. You understand? Then the bless, when God bless you, everybody's going to see you, you being blessed. There's nothing going to hide. Like nobody know you blessed. Trust me. Go ahead. <laughs> and all these blessings shall come on thee and overtake thee, if thou shalt hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God. You heard the word? If. If. You obey the Lord our God. If, if you obey the, the Lord our God. But have you obeyed the Lord our God? God said, uh, God said, he give us a Sabbath. What you said? He said, nah, I'm going to do Sunday, first day of the week. God said, I give you a law to keep. You said, nah, Christ, we move the law away. You see, uh, you see all these thoughts that pop up in your head. You know why they pop up in your head? Because you are rebellion children. That's why we just read in his, uh, Isaiah 30. Because if you, if you have some type of senses, we were destroyed because we didn't keep no laws. Then you're going to tell me, don't keep the law under Christ. The only law we're not supposed to keep under Christ is the laws of sacrifice. Why do you think? Let me show you something. Uh, give me that in Roman 8. Woman eight. Why do you think why do you think Paul is, is giving us the God the God line right here? I want you to read me woman eight and verse woman eight. Where is it? Seven? Yeah, read verse seven. Romans eight verse seven. Mm-hmm. Because the carnal mind is enmity against God. You see, the carnal mind, the carnal mind coming from where? The world. The world is the carnal mind. It's against God. Go ahead. For it is not subject to the law of God. You see that? God did not create it to be submitted to his laws. Then, you know what I mean? Like, like you might be confused. The law, the mind, the carnal mind. I'm going to show you where the carnal mind came from. The carnal mind came from the nations. God did not give him laws, statutes, and commandments. What God gave him to worship? The moon, the stars. You understand? The suns. Other gods. That's where the carnal mind came from. Because no way you can have a carnal mind. No way you can have in your mind. You can break God's laws, salvation coming to you. That's a carnal mind. 
Only white people can think like that. You understand? Only the nation can think like that. Because we as the children of Israel, no way we can lose our common sense in thinking that salvation is coming to you without you keeping any laws. When Christ himself tells you that, I kept the law so you may keep these laws in me. But the dumb Christians, Christianity, the demon, say, nah, you don't have to do that. God is love. God is grace. Don't know what the hell he's talking about. Go ahead. Because the carnal mind is enmity against God. You see that? These nations, they're not there for God. They're going to make sure they feed you with philosophy. They'll allow you to think, and this is your own thing. You're doing your own thing. You know, like you saying that, you saying, yeah, I don't believe that's a God. Then you're thinking that's your own words. No, no, no. You learned that on TV, niggas. <laughs> you understand? Straight up, you learned that from, from TV. <laughs> you understand? That was not your own thoughts. Somebody tell you that. Go ahead. For it is not subject to the law of God. You see that these nations are not going to be submitted to the laws of God. That's where their carnal mind came from. From the world. Go ahead. Neither indeed can be. You see that? Well, it can never be. God created like that. Go ahead. So then, they that are in the flesh cannot please God. You see that? If you're in the flesh, you can never please God. You see? You follow the doctrine of Christianity, you're in the flesh. <laughs> you understand? You can never please God. Because you don't know what is the pleasing of God is. Go ahead. But you're not in the flesh, but in the spirit. Because, yeah, let's, let's read it again. Let's read it again one more time. But ye are not in the flesh, but in the spirit. No, no, read oh, the verse thing. Eight, verse 7. Go ahead. Because the carnal mind is enmity against God. Go ahead. For it is not subject to the law of God. Go ahead. Neither indeed can be. Mm -hmm. So then, they that are in the flesh cannot please God. If you're living in the flesh, that means you, you live in, in the flesh, you can never please God. Go ahead. But you are not in the flesh. You, you're not in the flesh. Go ahead. But in the spirit. In the spirit, what you going to do? Go ahead. If so, be that the spirit of God dwell in you. Now, if any man have not the spirit of Christ, he is none of his. Let's, let's break that down. Read it slowly now. Yes, sir. Be ye not, but ye are not in the flesh. You are not in the flesh, but we are in the flesh. This is the flesh. You are not of the world. You're not a part of this world. Go ahead. But in the spirit. But in the spirit of God that dwell in you. Go ahead. If so be that the spirit of God dwell in you. If the spirit of God dwell in you, let me show you what kind of mindset you're going to have. Give me a woman 12 and 2. If the spirit of God dwell in you, this is what you, this, this is, this is, this is the changing. Go ahead. Romans 12 verse 2. And be not conformed to this world. See? This world is flesh. <laughs> be not conformed to this world. You understand? Don't have a mind of this world. That's what he's referring to. The carnal mind of this world. Go ahead. But be transformed by the renewing of your mind. By the renewing of your mind that is in you. Change that. Change your thoughts. Change the way you live. Change the way you eat. You understand? Change the way you sleep. Change everything about you. Go ahead. That you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect Will of God. That's why your mind must be changed. So you may know what is the perfect will of God. What is pleasing unto God is God's laws. But if your mind don't change, you will think that, yo, I can do whatever I want. You know I mean, I can dance and clap my hands. Have it. No, 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 no. No, you don't know what is pleasing unto God. What God gives you that is pleasing to him. His laws, his statutes, and the commandments he gives to you. That's pleasing unto God. But Christianity has not given you the commandment of God. Christianity tells you that you don't have to keep none of it. Because it's a spirit of demonic. It's a demon. You don't have to keep God's laws. Everything going to be good. Because Christianity is a carnal mind. Go ahead. And be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Because when you transform by the renewal of your mind, guess what? You no longer follow the carnal mind of the world. You understand? 
a carnal mind, a carnal mind of the world will tell you that I don't see nothing wrong with homosexual. That's a carnal mind. I don't see nothing wrong with a woman being a hoe. I don't see nothing wrong with that. That's a carnal mind. I don't see nothing wrong with our people in the bottom. That's a carnal mind. I don't see nothing wrong with our children living, living like this. That's a carnal mind. I don't think we should separate ourselves from these other people. That's a carnal mind. It's of the world. You learn that of the world. That emotion, that feeling of the world, the perception of the world. That's where you learned that from. You didn't learn that from the Bible. Go ahead. That you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Because where are we going to go and find out what is the perfect will of God? We got to go in the Bible and find out where is the will of God. What is the will of God? What is it? Is that man going to tell us? What is the will of God we must search out? Because inside the Bible, let's check it out. What is the will of God? What is acceptable to the Lord? You got to search that thing out. The same way you search to be a lawyer, the same way you search to be a doctor, the same way you search to be an RN, the same way you search to be anything of this world, you must search what is the will of God. You must know what is the will of God. So you don't have a dumb thought pop up in your head talking about just dance and, and clap your hand. Or celebrate Christmas or Thanksgiving or about to happen. Or just celebrate Halloween who just passed with, with these dumb thoughts. You must know what is the will of God to overcome your dumb thoughts. Go ahead. Psalms 40 and 8. I delight to do thy will, O my God. Mm -hmm. Yea, thy law is within my heart. You see that? I delight to do your will, O Lord, because your law is within my mind. So if the laws of God is in our mind, guess what we're going to do? Passover, poem, feast of delegation. Because the laws of God is in our mind. Leviticus 23 is giving us the laws of God. Leviticus 11 is giving us what to eat, what not to eat. These are the laws of God who are supposed to be in our mind. So we may fight the carnal, the carnal thoughts that filter through our mind every day. You understand? God said we're not supposed to eat pork. You notice that in this society, everything got pork in it. Almost everything got pork in it. You notice that? God said we're not supposed to eat shrimp. And you notice that the things that the society pushing, pushing upon people is shrimp, lobster, crab. Everything God said don't eat, they go to the white man. He, that's what he promote. That's why you must know what is the will of God. You're dumb Christians. You must know what is the will of God. What is acceptable to the Lord. They go a dumb Christian. Give me the Deuteronomy 22 and 5. They go a dumb thought of Christians. We're going to read a law to, to your Christians. Deuteronomy 22 verse 5. The woman shall not wear that which pertaineth unto a man. A woman not supposed to wear the things that pertain to men. What is pertain to a man in this society? A woman wear pants. You read that to a sister. She will, she, she, she will say pants. Yeah. Hey, sis, you're going to change? No, I'm good. I'm good. That's a dumb thought. That's a demon. <laughs> You understand? Yeah, man. That's a demon. She will read it. Then they also have some dumb Israel like too. They'll read it and say, nah. But they understand. But the next part, they understand it fully. Nah. But when they get to the first part, the dumb thought, I, 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 don't, I don't get it. Go ahead. Neither shall a man put on a woman's garment. He said, woman not supposed to wear what pertains to a man. Neither shall a man put in a woman garment on. That means that knowledge will teach you that women have their own garment, men have their own garment. Am I right or wrong, brothers? Yes, sir. That's what knowledge will teach you. And but the dumb thoughts? Nah. See, I can wear that skirt. I can wear that dress. Everything is good. This is Babylon. <laughs> you just exercise your right. You're going to find the only right you're going to exercise is the nook. <laughs> is the nook. <laughs> is the nook. The nook is coming. Believe me, they got your name on it. That's the only right you're going to exercise. Is the nooks that are going to burn you simple behind. Go ahead. 
The woman shall not wear that which pertaineth unto a man. Mm -hmm. Neither shall a man put on a woman's garment. For all that do so are abomination unto the Lord thy God. You see? But you got people on TikTok. You got people on Instagram. You got people on Facebook. You got, they're all praising the Lord with pants on. Nah, sis. They go their dumb thoughts. No, the Lord, you, you see, God doesn't judge you by the outside appearance, by what you wear. Let's get that in Isaiah for the dumb spirit, man, about clothing. Yep, what is that? Uh, yes, Zephaniah, what is it? Uh, we haven't pulled that for a long time. One in eight. I haven't pulled that for a long time. Zephaniah, one in eight. Zephaniah, chapter one, verse eight. Mm -hmm. And it shall come to pass in, uh -huh. the, in the day of the Lord's sacrifice. Because the day of the Lord's sacrifice, that's when everybody going to be awake. <laughs> you see that sister that wear pants that day? She going to be awake that day. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that homosexual brother, that day you going to be awake that day. <laughs> that lesbian, that day, she going to be awake that day. The day of judgment, everybody going to be awake that day. There ain't going to be no confusion that day, sister. That why you was confused. You understand? Where, where the witness is out here. The witness is a man and a woman. Together create you. Because of that dumb thought. Or that dumb mind of yours. No. I like me a woman. Like I'm a woman. I like woman. I'm a man. I like man. Then that day. That, that demon will laugh you that day. <laughs> that day. The demon will say, Shalom. <laughs> Most high in Christ bless you <laughs> with the lake of fire. That day, the homosexual that day, the demon going to left you that day. <laughs> All you're going to stay with is the breast and the fake booty. Then it's going to be death. <laughs> it's going to be death that day. The drug dealer that day, the demon going to left you that day, brother. The pimp that day, that spirit of that pimp going to leave you, brother. You're going to find out all you had is the Cadillac and the burner fire. All you had is your, your clothes on or whatever you dress like pimp or, or, or what is that pink, yellow, green suit. You're going to find out that demon going to leave you that day. Death going to inherit you that day. You understand? That lying demon that day. It's going to left you that day. Then you're going to find out the lion demon going to say, Shalom, I'm out now. It's time for me to go now. <laughs> you understand? It's, I'm Shalom now. They've been, nice. been, nice been nice to know you. You understand? Con, con. Go ahead. And it shall come to pass in the day of the Lord's sacrifice uh -huh. that I will punish the princes and the king's children. You see that God said he will punish the children. That's what God says, sister. And you don't think judgment was going to come for you wearing pants. You better read the Bible all over again, sis. Then you know, you know, you know how you know they're a bunch of fools in, 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 in these media? There you go. You would text your sister cover your head when you open this Bible. You understand? They refuse to do everything that Bible said to do. These dumb Christians, they say, nah, we don't have to do it. God going to hurt us out. Then they're easy to pull out the scripture when they said, when two gather together. <laughs> Yo, <laughs> you need to read that verse again and pay attention to that verse. <laughs> you go up and down in that verse. You better pay attention to that verse and really understand that verse. <laughs> go ahead. That I will punish the princes and the king's children and all such as are clothed <laughs> with strange apparel. You tell me. Two voodoo guys stand together and say, in the name of Jesus Christ. The guy, Christ is in the mix. Are y'all stupid? You told me two Muslim dudes stand and, and, and speak foolishness. You tell me Christ is in the mix. Are y'all that dumb? They go, two homosexuals stand up, but God is in the mix. <laughs> two liars stand and say, God is in the mix. <laughs> y'all better read the scripture again. Go ahead. And it shall come to pass in the day of the Lord's sacrifice that I will punish the princes and the king's children and all such as are clothed. No, no, brother. We did all that clothing. What? And all such as are clothed with strange 
apparel. Sister, that day that Christ arrived, if Christ see you with that strange apparel, which is pants, he did not tell you to wear that, sis. Death. They go there homosexual with their dress. Hey, I'm going to come and do my thing. Yo, Christ, Christ. Whoa. And you say, stop. Stop. Right there. Read the verse for the brother. <laughs> and, it, and it shall come to pass in the day of the Lord's sacrifice that I will punish the princes and the king's children and all sisters are clothed with strange apparel. That homosexual that day, brother, that who, who, who you have saying that this is your lifestyle, this is how you live life. That day, your life going to be in that day. Death. There ain't going to be no one. They going to be like, oh, 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 can you have mercy? Can you have grace? Then that day, you're going to realize mercy and grace was a gift from God <laughs> for you to get yourself together. You understand? You're going to find out that day, all confusion about grace Grace is going to stand strong that day. Grace is going to say, you see me? This is me. I come to you. You refuse to change your life. <laughs> Grace is going to say, when you were sitting in the bed, in a, in a death bed, did I not come to you? Did you not, you was watching a show, did I not come to you? Show you that this is your way, that God wants you to change? Grace is going to say, did I not come to the hospital? You saw me. You know me. But did you change? No. You understand? The most free care of people is the grave. You see, in the grave, grace cannot, grace is not active in the, gra in the grave. But where you live, you still breathe. Grace is a gift from God for you to get it together. If you didn't know about Passover, grace is going to teach you about Passover. If you didn't know about poem, grace going to cheat you about poem. If you didn't know about feast of dedication, grace going to cheat you about feast of dedication. If you didn't know how to live a godly life, grace going to cheat you how to live a godly life. If you, didn't, if you didn't know how to live a holy life, grace going to cheat you how to live a holy life. You understand? But grace said that day I come to you. When you was in the stripper club, I came to you. You understand? When you was lying, I came to you. You refused me. Today, I'm sorry. Death. Go ahead. And it shall come to pass in the day of the Lord's sacrifice that I will punish the princes and the king's children and all such as are clothed with strange apparel. That day, sister, the dress going to be made for our sisters. Ain't going to be made for no man. To wear. Because death. The day men going to wear pants and be honest wearing pants. Where the woman no longer wearing the pants. These sisters that love wearing pants is going to be death. You understand? These sisters too will be preaching without covering your head. It's going to be death that day. For the rebellion and pride spirit you got. When the spirit of God say cover your head. Cover your head. Cover your head. You dumb Christians. Cover your head. That's what God said. That day, you're going to be destroyed for the lack of being stupid and dumb. That's what's going to happen to you that day. You, you understand? It's going to happen to you that day. Let's go back. Let's go back. Strange apparel. God said you have a strange apparel on, sis. And they're, 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 they're in these media talking about, let me pray for you. No, 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 no. You better pray for yourself. <laughs> what's going to happen to you? Go ahead. Yep, let's go back. Romans chapter 12, verse 2. And be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Yeah, let's give me gems. Give me the book of gems, brother. A lot of people, they don't understand. Give me gems 2 and 14. Let's start at 14. This is for the dumb Christians again. Who's saying that I don't have to keep no laws. I'm good. This is what, this is, see, brother gems. Is going to help you out. James chapter 2 verse 14. What doth it profit, my brethren, though a man say he hath faith and have not works? See that? You say you believe the Bible, but you never keep the Feast of, uh, uh, the feast of Tabernacle. 
Feast of uh, uh, Pentecost or no Feast of Passover. You never keep. You don't know nothing about poem. You don't know nothing about the Feast of the Lord. But you say you have faith in, in the Bible. If you have faith in something, you go detail. You search that thing out you have faith on. Make sure you stand strong for it. Your dumb Christians ain't doing that. Y'all stand strong for the American society. You understand? Y'all stand strong though. Y'all want to know who's going to be the next president? Y'all want to know everything about this dumb society. You understand? Y'all want to be a part of these dumb things. But you refuse to go back to these, to these laws and search out the things that God said to search out. Come on. What doth it profit, my brethren? Though a man say he have faith and have not works. You see that? You say you have faith. Faith, that means you believe what you read. You do what you read. That's what the work, the work is. You have faith, you're going to put works to your faith. You understand? If I have faith, I'm going to become a doctor. Guess what I'm going to have to do? I got to search out to get a college, to go to school. This is, I'm going to put works to being a doctor. But why when you get to the Lord faith now, you're a dumb Christian confused. You know why you confused? Because you are a rebellion spirit. Y'all don't take God counsel. You're going to die here in, in Babylon, man. In the land of the Edomite. You're going to die here. Go ahead. What doth it profit, my brethren? Though a man say he hath faith and have not works. No. Brother said, I believe the Bible. Man, but some things I don't agree with. <laughs> I believe the Bible. Some things I don't. You don't make no damn sense, man. Go brush your teeth, man. <laughs> Dumb behind, man. It don't make no damn sense, man, with your, with your stink breath. I mean, go watch. Go, go do something. Go ahead. Can faith save him? If a brother or sister be naked and destitute of daily food, and one of you say unto them, depart in peace, <laughs> be ye warmed and filled. I mean, that brother is hungry, right? He come to you for food, right? Then you're going to say, depart in peace. So if you love the brother, what you going to do? You're going to put works to the love. You're going to feed the brother. That's love. You understand? Say, what you going to do? Just tell him go. Then you have an empty stomach. Where's faith on that? Go ahead. And, once, and one of you say unto them, depart in peace. Be ye warmed and filled. Mm-hmm. Notwithstanding, ye give them not those things that are needful to the body. What doth it profit? Yeah, what does you, what that dead going to profit? You didn't give him things that he need for the body. You didn't give him things that he need for, for food. So what does that profit? Go ahead. Even so faith, if it have not works, is dead. You see that? Even so faith is just like that. You're supposed to put clothes on the brother back if you love the brother. You're supposed to put food in the brother plate if you love. That's faith. That means that the Bible says, love your neighbor as you love yourself. Would you like to sleep hungry? Would you like to stay naked? So you're going to love your neighbor as you love yourself. You got clothes on, right? So how the hell are you going to send him, send him in the street with no clothes? You, you feed yourself, right? You got food to eat. How the hell are you going to send him away with no food? Where is faith on that? There's no faith on that. That's what God trying to let you know, man. Faith come with works. You say you're about the Lord business, you better come with their works. Faith come with works. Go ahead. Even so, faith. If it hath not works, is dead. Being alone. Being alone is death. Because faith without works, you ain't doing nothing. Go ahead. Yea, a man may say, thou hast faith, and I have works. Show me thy faith without thy works, and I will show thee my faith by my works. That's what we Israelites do. We show our faith by our works. We keep in what is written in here. That's our faith. That's our works. This is the work. We put works into our faith. We're not going to say, Lord, I love you. Then we don't know the day of Passover. That, that thing don't make no damn sense. God, I, love, I know you, God, but you don't, know, you don't know that Christ only come for the nation of Israel. No way you can be that dumb. Because you confuse. You confuse. You're dumb Christians. You're confused. It's you're confused. Faith come by works. You have to put works to this. You have to meditate on this days and night. That's where that prosperity is going to come. But guess what? 
No, Lord, bless me with that. Bless me with No, 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 no. You have not kept no law for no blessing. You understand? That's why we have to come with, un- that's why we have to teach with understanding, man. At the end of the day, these dumb Christians must be rebuked. Rebuke them out of the demonic spirit they have on them, man. Christianity is a spirit of a demon. Then it, it is in our people. You understand? Then that demon so prideful, we sort of listening and do what the Lord said. Nah, I don't have to listen to you all. Then you're going to die then. That plain and simple, man. Trying to save a soul. But you don't want, to, you don't want your soul saved, so you're going to die. There go Christianity. Yeah, give me Proverbs 16 and verse 3. Faith without work is dead. Proverbs chapter 16, verse 3. Yeah, let me show you. Give me, uh, uh, give me uh, Sawak 32. 14. Faith without work is dead. Faith without work is dead. Go ahead. Sirach chapter 32, verse 14. Whoso feareth the Lord. Will if you rec- fear the Lord, go ahead. Will receive his discipline. You're going to receive God's discipline. If you fear God, you're going to receive God's discipline. What is God's discipline? His laws, his statutes, his commandments. That's what he discipline you by. Go ahead. And they that seek him early shall find favor. You see that? If you seek God early, where are you going to seek God from? The Bible. What does God require of you? What does God want you to do while you're in this earth? What does God require of you? You didn't just come here to just eat chicken and die. The hell one with you. Go ahead. He that seeketh the law shall be filled therewith. You see that? If you seek God's laws, you're going to seek with you're going to seek the wisdom, the knowledge that move, that move your spirit to do the right stuff. Go ahead. But the hypocrite will be offended thereat. You see that? When the law come out, now he's going to be offended by the law. Let's read that thing again. He that seeketh the law shall be filled where, therewith. You see, if you seek the law, you're going to be filled with God knowledge. Go ahead. But the hypocrite. You see the brother, the sister that is a hypocrite, Christianity is a spirit of hypocrite. What they're going to say? Will be offended thereat. Nah. Nah, I'm offended because you told me I cannot wear pants. I'm offended because you told me I'm a homosexual. I'm offended because you told me I'm a liar. I'm offended because you told me I'm a whole mugger. I'm offended you told me that I ain't married. I'm offended because you telling me who the hell is you? God. God is in me, is talking to you. <laughs> Go ahead. They that fear the Lord shall find judgment. You see that? You're going to find God's judgment. Let's go back. Let's go back. Let, let, let's go to, uh, but yeah, jump to, uh, where you was at? What verse you in there? That was at uh, verse 16. Give me, 16. Yeah, yeah, give me Sawak 322. Y'all crazy, man. Y'all Christians is crazy. You cannot overcome your demonic demon that is in you if you're not keeping God's commandments. That's why you guys don't understand. You're sick. You're a legion of demon. Christianity being a legion of demon of our people and our people, man. Unless you all repent the right way, these legions of demons going to bring you to the lake of fire. Straight up. Go ahead. Sirach, chapter 3, verse 22. But what is commanded thee? Think- what, is, what is commanded of you? What God committed of you? Think thereupon with reverence. You see, what God said? Think thereupon with reverence. You see that? See? What is we're commended? Of, give me that in uh, Deuteronomy 12. Uh, what is that? 10 and 12. What is we're commended of you? What is we're commended of you? You're dumb Christians. Go ahead. Deuteronomy 10 and 12. And now Israel, what doth the Lord thy God require of thee? What God require of you? But to fear the Lord thy God. You must fear God, Israel. To walk in all his ways. You see, you must walk in all God's ways. Because when you refuse to walk in God's ways, we find ourselves in captivity. Guess where we're at in America. Why the servant is over us. Why are people supposed to be our servant? How the hell are they over us? Make no damn sense. So we have to repent. 
and keep God's commandment, fam. Go ahead. And to love him and to serve the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul, to keep the commandments of the Lord and his statutes, which I command thee this day for thy good. You see that? If you want to live a good life, Moses tell you what was good. It's God's commandment that's what's good. What is evil? The nations. They are living an evil life, an unjust life. Like that's why so-called blacks, people and the Spanish people, that you looking at the nation, they are unjust. There you go, you pleading with, a, with the people that are unjust for justice. Are you kidding me? You didn't, you didn't read that man's history? You did not read his bio? Over 400 treaty? You did not use, read my man's bio? Or you just coolest? You just confused? You know why? Because you blind by his chicken. By pork chops. Shrimp, lobster. That's where you quiet. That's where you blind at. Because you refuse to, you refuse to let these fire animals go. You understand? But God have a remedy for you. They call it the nuclear. He designed it for you. He designed it for you. When he dropped that thing, sister, brother, guess what? That day, all demons gonna break loose. All demons. All the legion demon you got on your that day. That legion demon going to left you. Then you're going to realize God was true. Let every man be a dumb, a damn liar. Let the white man be a liar. Let the word of God be true. Go ahead. Sirach. Mm -hmm. Sirach, chapter 3, verse 22. But what is commanded thee? Think thereupon with reverence. You see that? What is commanded of thee? Think upon it with what? With reverence. With reverence. Got two heavens, that thing. Give me so Sirach 12. You know, we 13 and 14. Sirach, chapter 12, verse 13. Who will pity a charmer that is bitten with a serpent, or any such as come nigh wild beast? Mm. So one that goeth to a sinner and is defiled with him in his sins. Where you at? 12, 13, and 14? Yes, sir. Sirach 12. Read verse 14. Verse 14, so one that goeth to a sinner and is defiled with him in his sins. Yeah, man, give me uh, Psalm 143, verse 5. Because we have to revenge that thing. We have to think upon that thing. Because that's what we require of us. What is require of us? Go ahead. Psalms 143, verse 5. I remember the days of old. See, I remember the days of old. I remember the days of old. Go ahead. I meditate on all thy works. You see that? You have to meditate on all God's works. You got to remember the days of old. What he have done in the days of old. You understand? Go ahead. I muse on the works of thy hands. You see that? That's what the brother said. And but a lot of our people. You understand? Yeah, go back to what is committed of you. You just read. What is it? Uh, Sirach 322, I think. Sirach 322. But what is commanded thee? Think thereupon with reverence. Stop. Give me the, 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 uh, the, uh, the Ezekiel, the Bible. I got it. 12, yeah, yeah, 32. What is, what is, yep, that's it right here. Ecclesiastes 12, verse 13. Let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Fear God and keep his commandments. See, this is the whole conclusion of the whole matter. Why we in this earth is to fear God, keep his commandment. Go ahead. For this is the whole duty of man. See, if you want to know your purpose in life, if you want to know why you was created in this earth, because some of your, your, your have so much of a low self esteem because you was born in a crack family. You thinking that 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 crack family can discern that can 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 destroy your life? No, no, no. The crack family, God used the crack family to bring the most precious thing out of nothing. That's you are precious. You understand? Some of y'all that was born in a poor society, you're thinking that nah, I ain't gonna. No, no, no. God used that society to bring something like you that is so precious. You understand? You have to look at yourself as special, man. 
You understand? You're, you're rolling with the low self-esteem. You refuse to do diet. You refuse to burn the fat. You refuse to do anything else. Because you, can't, you, 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 you are happy in the behaviors you're in. You're comfortable in the lifestyle you live in. You understand? No, sis. You're better than this. It's time to look at yourself in the mirror. Tell yourself, I love myself. I must take care of myself. Same thing as brothers, man. Look at yourself in the mirror, man. And tell yourself that I love myself. That you're going to do something good for yourself. You understand? You cannot come up in here, your breath, or, or, your, your, your breath or, or, or messed up come up in here, man. You have to understand these things. These things, these things that we're learning in the Bible is to give us a, 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 a better way of life, a structure. You understand? Order. You understand me? But a lot of times what we're dealing with, we're dealing with rebellion spirit, man. They will not take heed to these commandments. They will not take heed to the brotherhood spirit and just build, build, build. Let's make it better, man, so we can get the hell out of here. But yeah, some of y'all, I don't think y'all want to leave Babylon. Y'all want to go in to vote. But whichever the white man y'all want. Go ahead. Let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Mm -hmm. Fear God and keep his commandments. That's what, that's what God said. Fear God and keep his commandment. This is the whole duty. This is what committed of you. You understand? That's what God wants you to do. So that's why you have to seek these words. You got to read these things. You have to meditate on these things. And look up on it to see what is pleasing into God. Laws, statutes, and commandments. That's why Christ made that statement in Matthew 5 and 17. Let's read it again. Matthew 5 verse 17. Think not that I am come to destroy the law. Why would Christ say think not? Because there are going to be dumb people who thinking that Christ come to destroy the law. Christ said, Christ already know things. He said there are going to be some dumb spirit that comes saying that I said that you don't have to keep no law. Christ said don't even think that. Go ahead. Do not think that I am come to destroy the law uh -huh. or the prophets. I am not come to destroy but to fulfill. See, to fulfill the thing that was written of him, of the law. I mean, when you read Psalm, Psalm, talk about Christ. When you read Isaiah, Isaiah, talk about Christ. So he must reveal these things that was written about him. He must fulfill these things. I mean, why then a donkey? He must fulfill the thing that was written about him. The whole Bible was written about him, so he must fulfill. Go ahead. For verily I say unto you, till heaven and earth pass, one jot or one tittle, so not and shall in no wise pass from the law. You see? Is it, do you see the heaven? Do you see the earth? So the Lord said, as long there is a heaven, there is a earth. What God said? One jot or one tittle shall in no wise pass from the law. You see that? For you're a dumb Christian. You understand? Who thinking that I don't have to keep no law. Salvation is... No, 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 no. Sis, brother, you need to wake the hell up. Before this place being destroyed, you need to wake the hell up. You understand? Because destruction is coming for this place. You think the American dream is forever? No, not according to God's laws. Give me that in our Revelation 18. That's what God said. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to end it with that. God said what in Revelation 18? Revelation 18 verse 4. And I heard another voice from heaven saying, Come out of her, my people. See, what, what the hell you end, what the hell you end his, his politic for? What the hell you end to that American dream? What the hell you end to, the, to things that are that vain things that don't have nothing to do with anything? What you end to, man? God say what? Come out of her, my people. Come out of her, my people. When you learn that? In Matthew 2 and uh, uh, Matthew, what is it? Matthew 2 and 6. God said that Israelite must come out the America philosophy. My people, not everybody God people, you dumb Christians. God people are the children of Israel, which is the blacks. And the, that's who we are. That's who we're going to be. And we are the son of the living God. Go ahead. Come out of her, my people, that ye be not partakers of her sin. You see that? That's what God wants us to out of America. Philosophy. So we may not be a part of that sin that America adopt. Because America adopt homosexual. Where in the Bible is it? We supposed to do that? No. In the book of Romans, they said, no, that's, a, that's unheard of. 
No, but guess what? We're in a society where there's all that push. Lies, lies after lies, lies after lies. You understand? Deception, lies, deceiving spirit, man. It's flying everywhere. Lie after lies. But guess who's in power? The white man. The children of the damn devil. So what you expect? You understand? Your brothers, your sisters, take these class. Don't take it lightly. You understand? Because our job is to make it plain to our people. You understand? We're not here to make it hard. We're here to make it plain. Plain where you cannot gain saying anything. So apply the laws and to your life, live the laws. If you say you have faith, where's God's laws? If you say you, you adopt grace, why are you not building yourself? If you say you love mercy, why are you not doing nothing? What you think? You think Christ died and give you a free license to sin? No, Christ died to give you a way out. That through him, we may overcome all things. You understand? We may overcome our temptation. We may overcome our thoughts. We may overcome things of the world. You understand? That's why he died for. With that, we say shalom. rolling with. Either you rolling with the spirit of Satan and who's waiting for the lake of fire or you're going to roll with the spirit of Christ. Created, manufactured right here in the Americas. Don't, don't slip on that. This new Negro that we see today was a creation. your breath when you know death and destruction is everywhere. Nigga, you gonna die. Fix your face. Yeah.
Boy. That's right. Fix your face. Uh huh. We ain't going, going, we we ain't going no. Well, what's we happening, y'all? <laughs> it's Friday. Thank God. Thank God. We <laughs> made it. We back on Fix Your Face. Let me well, bro. They had us shut down for a minute, bro. Yeah, man. They can't keep us down. They can't hold us down, man. I don't give. Listen, tornadoes. We got ice storms. We got earthquakes out here. There's a whole lot of stuff. Natural disasters is happening out here. It ain't gonna stop us, though, man. That's right. Fix your face. The whole face. All right, man. All praise be to the Most High God. Um, Matter of fact, let me introduce everybody. We got Officer Yawasop in the building. Give it up, Officer Yawasop. Shalom, shalom. That's right. Most High Christ bless. To his right, we got Officer Abiyah in the place to be. All praises to the Most High. And y'all know I got my reader ride, uh, riding with me, Officer Lemuel. All right. Before we get started, I want to apologize to everybody right now. This class is going to be a continuation of the class I tried to finish a few weeks back. Okay? Inordinate affection. Uh, before we get started, though, I want to read something. Uh-oh. 1 Corinthians the second chapter. First Corinthians chapter two. We're going to start at verse 12. First Corinthians chapter two, verse 12. I want to give everybody some encouragement. You know what I'm saying? Because like I said, again, y'all know how things go here at Fix Your Face Friday. Okay, so we're going to, up, we're going to build you up first and then you're going to get tossed down. <laughs> I know it's supposed to be the opposite you know what I'm saying? But here we do a little things, we do things a little differently, all right? <laughs> Go ahead, bro. First Corinthians chapter 2, verse 12. Read. Now we have now now we have received not the spirit of the world. We have not received the spirit of the world. Talking about you, brothers and sisters, that believe. Those of you all that have given your lives to the most high, that follow the words in this Bible, that actually do what God says to do. Read that again. Now we have received not the spirit of the world. We didn't receive the spirit of the world. Come on. But the spirit which is of God. But the spirit which is of who? Which is of God. The most high. Come on. That we might know the things that are freely given to us of God. That we might know the things that are freely given to us of God. Brothers and sisters, this is why you have the understanding. This is why you understand what the Bible is talking about. And it's hidden to everybody else. We know these deep mysteries of the Lord because he's given them to us. All right. Read on. Verse 13. Read. Which things also we speak. Which also these things we speak. We in the streets crying aloud. Let everybody know what God said to do. Yes, sister, I know you crying aloud. Your family, your grandma, your moms, whoever is around is going to get this verse. I understand. It says, which things also we speak. Read. Not in the words which a which. Man's wisdom teaches. Not in the words which man's wisdom teaches. I need y'all to understand something. A lot of times, and y'all have heard this before, your family or whomever, they don't want you to, you know, break it down and read the verse. What they want. They want you to talk. No, 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 no. Well, let me read it. No, 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 no. I just want to hear it from you. You said, no, 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 no. That's not how we operate. That's not how we move. It says not, read it again, which things also we speak. Not in the words which man's wisdom teaches, uh -huh. but which the Holy Ghost teaches. But which what? But which the Holy Ghost teaches. The Holy Ghost. The way that we receive that Holy Spirit, you read John the 14th chapter. If ye love me, keep my commandments. This is how we receive the Holy Spirit. This is that comforter that he sent unto us. And it's going to abide with us as long as we do what he said to do. So don't be upset. Don't get, don't get all your britches in a bunch whenever things ain't going the way you think it should. When folks ain't listening, when folks ain't trying to hear it, you are not of this world. Okay? It says, which the Holy Ghost teaches, read. Comparing spiritual things with spiritual. Comparing spiritual things with spiritual. We went to a, a little comedy show last night. And like I said, the more and more I see these things, these examples, the more and more I realize we are not of this world at all. Matter of fact, it was so, <laughs> it was so bad, your boy Marlon Wayans felt uncomfortable with some of them gay jokes he was telling him. He didn't get no laughs. <laughs> right. The whole, and you know we ride deep out here. <laughs> we was deep in that thing. Nobody cracked a smile. He was like, he literally said straight up, all right, I'm talking to the white people in the room. I wish yep. we could have got that on video, bro. Right. I wish we could have got that on video. But all praises to the most high. Please be encouraged. You are not of this world, all right? So let's right. start. Ooh, wait. You know what? I want to go straight into a video. 
because they thought they wasn't going to get the rest of the video last time we played. See, we stopped halfway in, okay? I know some of y'all are traumatized, okay? I already know. People mad. I'm getting, I'm getting little evil little messages left. Why y'all showing this stuff? Why y'all doing that? And then they say, well, why y'all laughing? Look here, if you don't like the fact that, yeah, I'm going to laugh if I find something humorous. If you don't like that, don't watch me. Watch TV. <laughs> go, turn your, go turn your TV on. You don't got to look at me. You ain't got to listen to me. Right. Okay? We move like the prophets move. Some of y'all ain't used to how the men of God teach. Some of y'all ain't used. Because guess what's going to happen? If Deacon I Bill is doing some dumb stuff, guess what's going to take place? Y'all going to laugh at me. Right. You better. I need to feel all that rebuke. All right? All right, so we're going to open up with the video. We're going to start here. We're going to finish this, and then we're going to get back into the topic. But I want y'all to feel all this because it's happening. Go ahead. I think I'm just going to help and stay here. You're going to what? Just to help clean. I mean, this is such a mess we're leaving them with. It's going to be okay. I'm just going to come home a little bit later, okay? It was at That's that all. moment she knew this Here's nigga was crazy. Morning, and says today's going to be awful. I just know it. Well, that person is just about guaranteed to have an awful day. In fact, he'll do the legwork to make it awful. Through the power of his attitude, he'll prevent every potentially good thing on his path from reaching its potential. And if good things do happen, well, he'll be looking in the other direction. Because what he's done is he's committed himself to the prison of negativity. Now, on the other side of this coin, a person who wakes up and greets the day with enthusiasm and positivity will see the good things on his path. Because through the power of... Dad? How do I feel about locked doors? What's that? 
Another book of yours? Are you asking me to get upset? I'm not asking you anything. Well, I'm asking you. I'm just leaving. This is pathetic, Dad. If you want me to apologize, I'll apologize. And I am sorry about what happened last night. And I did go too far. But what about you? Uh -oh. Am I totally alone here? Am I just this abusive monster and you're some sad, helpless victim? Or does it take two to tango? Because I think it does. And if I've done anything, you've done it with me. Don't shake your fucking head at me! Everything I've ever done has been for you, and for you, and for you, and to what end? I didn't ask for this. This is your thing, something you started. But I'm here now, and I'm in it, and I've given myself, and I've accepted you completely. But you are not just my father. You're my friend. You're my best friend. And maybe we can just agree that that's a beautiful thing, and not something to be perverted and corrupted and mutilated by your warped and confused conscience. It definitely is. You've always sabotaged everything good in your life. You've been shitting all over this from the minute we started. You never gave it a chance to be good. But you can sleep with that cold bitch in that loveless bed. And you can write your backwards book about your backwards son, but not a single word about what you've done. It's just love, Dad. And that is big. And that is scary. But there's being scared, and there's being a coward. And right now, you, you're breaking my heart. hit by a truck with named Angel Head. I want to ask you something, Isaiah. How long have you been standing there? How are you holding up? Why was your father crying when he drove you home from prom night? I'm sorry? 
on your prom night when he brought you back home. What about it? He was crying. That's the question What's she it? wants to ask. He was crying, and he wouldn't look at me. Are you being serious? He locked himself in the bathroom, and he just cried, and he cried all night with the sink running. I don't remember that at all. Is that when it started? That was 10 years ago. How am I supposed to remember what happened one night? Prom night? Which was 10 years ago. That's a pretty long time to remember what your father did at a specific time on a specific night. It, it started earlier. I, I know that. When, when did it start? Mom, you're emotional. I'm emotional. We are not Stop ourselves. It. You don't even know what you're trying to say. I know exactly what I am trying to say. Well, I don't. But I think it's pretty ugly what you seem to be saying, and I think you would agree if you could hear yourself. <laughs> you monster. You killed your own father. How could you? What? Wait. Get off of me! I'm warning you, Mom. You don't warn me! <laughs> I loved him better than you ever did. Whoa. You sick! Ow! Sick! Ow! Sick! Ow! Sick! I'm looking at the comments. Some of y'all are saying, I don't know what's going on. What is this? So what we're going to do is we're going to start from the beginning. Okay, let's rewind the video. We're going to start. Wait, wait. Huh? <laughs> wait, Deacon. What? Wait. No, no, no. I refuse. What's up? They lost. I don't want it. <laughs> they done. Y'all should go back and watch this part one. Deacon, they, they got a part one of this. Oh, yeah. my God. You're right. You're right. All right, yeah, okay. If you didn't catch it, if you did, if you try to figure out where we had this video, go and look for yourself. The name of it is something strange about the Johnsons. Yeah, go ahead and watch it from the beginning. At your own risk, okay. All right, real quick. So again, what are we we speaking on? As if y'all tune in a couple of weeks ago, in the Israelite community, we want to pretend like these things ain't happening. We like to act like. This stuff don't exist, that everything is, you know, peachy. Right. That white folks do stuff like this. Right. When God specifically gave us laws concerning, give me Leviticus 18. Leviticus 18th chapter. Start at verse 1. 
The book of Leviticus, chapter 18, verse 1. Uh -huh. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel, and say unto them, I am the Lord your God. After the doings of the land of Egypt, wherein ye dwelt, shall ye not do. So he, he was very specific on the things that you all seen and did in Egypt, you are not to do. So it goes on, read. And, at, and after the doings of the land of Canaan, whether, whether I bring you, shall ye not do. Uh -huh. Neither shall ye walk in their ordinances. Read. Ye shall do my judgments and keep mine ordinances. Read on. To walk therein. I am the Lord your God. I am the Lord your God. Therefore, we got to follow him. We obey him. Read on. Verse 5. Ye shall therefore keep my statutes and my judgments, which if a man do, he shall live in them. Read. I am the Lord. None of you shall approach. Listen close. Verse 6. None of you shall approach to any that is near of kin to him to uncover their nakedness. Right. I am the Lord. So here is we see most High God is very, very distinct on us not living like the mother nations. The first thing that he says concerning that is what? You shall not approach anybody that is near kin to you. This what we just what we watched is wrong on all levels. Okay? It's wrong on all 